Good morning. Today I'm going to show you how to create a mandala. The first thing that um, you need to do is to make sure that you are starting out with a um, square. So on your composition books you need to set up the biggest square that you can possibly fit onto your composition book. Next thing that you want to do is you want to draw two diagonal lines. One like this. And one like this. Then I want you to draw a line this way and then another one like this. Now these lines that that we just drew we want them to be as uh, transparent as possible so you want to make sure that or as light as possible not transparent I'm thinking transparent because I am uh, using my procreate app and uh, I will have to set up my transparency here to make it sh just slightly a little bit more um, transparent oh, hopefully I'm on the right yes I am So this needs to be light, very light. <clears throat> and the reason you want it to be light is because you don't want to, uh, in, you don't want it to interfere with the design that you're going to do. So I'm not going to show you a completed mandala on how to do it. I don't want this to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw a mandala. I just want you to give you I, I just want to give you a little bit of um, an input on how to get started on this and um, you want to start in the center of course and then you want to give yourself some guidelines to begin with okay so here four little dots and then you want you want to have pretty much the same distance from the center and you can use a ruler definitely you can use a ruler to measure to make sure that these dots are all the same distance from the center and then from here on, um, you could you could add more of these dots. Okay. So pretend that I have a ruler and I am measuring all this. If you're going to use the squares, keep in mind that anything that you do on the diagonal is going to be slightly different so when you're doing your diagonal dots you definitely want to use a ruler because this distance right here okay should be equal to this distance right here okay if you're going to put your mark right on the the corner that's gonna be too long because you you know that that's not if you know your geometry you'll know that that's not a true measurement so you kind of want to estimate in that case you know you want to you can even use like another piece of paper and you know mark that from here to here put little two little dots on the paper and then move 
and uh, make sure that your dots are equal distant. Okay. So moving right along, from this point on, um, the best thing to do is to um, try to keep your lines as consistent as possible. So if you're going to do something like this, for example, okay, you want to move your paper and do the same thing again. over here and then move your paper again do the same thing over here if you're gonna do this you will be certain that your mandala is going to be balanced and consistent all the way around okay so let's darken these lines as well a little bit since we've done those first two so um <clears throat> Let's say that my next line is going to be like that. So once again, you want to move your paper. So from here on, um, just try to add as many different kinds of lines and details. So uh, maybe the next line that I'm going to do here is going to be a curve. And I want to make sure that I will have Then I will have a curve that is the same every time I make it. So, by repeating the same kind of line, you form what I like to call muscle memory. Okay? And then Again, I can do this. Now, the thing that I highly recommend is that you draw very light because I am pretty sure that there will be a point when you're going to say, you know what? Hmm. I don't like that line over there and trust me I've I've done that so many times so 
So even though there, you know, there may be some lines that are slightly imperfect, like this one right here. What am I doing? Oh, it was in edit shape mode. Let's see, let's do it again. So let's say that this line right here is slightly bent out of shape. Don't worry about um, things that are a little bit bent out of shape. But try to keep them as consistent as possible, okay? So details are extremely important. Okay, so in this case here I want to add something like this. Keep in mind that we have a ton of different kinds of lines to choose from. So hopefully you'll be looking at your line worksheet and picking out some lines to draw from there. Um, let's see. So here I think I want to do this. So now I'm going to use another point of reference. Now, if you ever run out of ideas of, you know, what to add to your mandala, you could do one of two things. One is to just blindly pick a spot and start, you know, making a line from one spot to the next. Another thing you could do is um, look at some other mandalas and see what others have done the whole idea is for you to try to use as many different lines as you can so vertical lines diagonal lines zigzag lines you don't want to use um, lines that are going to be like the jagged line, for example. You don't want to use that kind of line because that can be slightly difficult to replicate. And remember, this is a radial balance. There, uh, I'm sorry, a radial pattern. Um, and... You want to have that repetition happening. So I'm going to stop
in just a moment because I, like I said, I don't want this to become a step-by-step -step instruction on how to make your mandala because I don't want you copying my mandala. I mean, you could, you could copy this much and then, you know, add more to your mandala, but try to use your imagination and see how many different ways can you do it. So since you have two pages in your composition book facing each other, you're going to do at least two mandalas. You could do more if you wanted. Um, you could do some smaller, some bigger. You can vary. You can create a whole entire design filled with all kinds of mandalas. But um, you want to start, you know, with something like this, where you are dividing up your square, square into eight parts. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, um, you could do six if you want. Um, just don't do odd numbers. So don't do five or three. I mean, you don't want to do three for sure. Uh, but don't 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 do five or seven because then it will be kind of difficult to vary some of this the design and I'll show you what I mean by varying so so far every single one of my petals um, in this design is exactly the same but let's say you want to do something like this over here of course you're gonna have to do the same thing opposite and maybe you want to do the same thing over here so the north south east and west side of your let's call this a compass because it kind of looks like a compass um, you want to do that kind of shape over there but then here, um, let's say you want to do something completely different. Let's say you want to do some something that has just a little circle like that. Okay. Well, if you were, if you had this divided into an odd number, you won't be able to have this A, B, A, B kind of design okay you couldn't you couldn't do that so you would be stuck with um, keeping all petals exactly the same so if you want to introduce a bit of variety in your design you you do want to have the even number okay so that's about it for this particular video or this particular instructional video I suggest that you are also watching the next one that I will be posting in the Google Classroom um, and then I want you to get started on yours thanks for watching